We are a year into the COVID-19 pandemic and a state of disaster that's brought an economy that was already limping to its knees. Against this backdrop, ongoing revelations of systemic corruption and high-ranking leaders thumbing their nose at legal processes have exposed rifts in the governing party. Here to examine what it means is a familiar face and one of our most well-loved talents, back as a guest presenter, Bongani Bingwa. In 26 years of South African democracy, only one party has held the reins of power, the African National Congress. A global pandemic and a state of disaster have exposed deep divisions within the ANC and the systemic corruption that is ravaging the country. Senior member of the National Executive Committee of the ANC and former Deputy Minister of Finance, Monvi Gungubele, believes the party is at a crossroads. If you read the letter of the President and look at the resolutions of the conference, our renewal position in 2017 does reach that point that ANC is viewed as being the main character in corruption. But the organization seen by many as best placed to take on the challenge is the ANC itself. An ANC that is dubious with regard to the issues of corruption, especially as they affect ANC itself, is actually, in my view, putting this country in danger because to me, ANC is central to the stability of this country. It is central to the prosperity of this country. According to political scientist and author of The Battle for the Soul of the ANC, Professor William Gumede, the schism within the party is rooted in an historical system of patronage. There are two factions in the ANC, essentially two bigger factions. So one faction, one could say, is the Sir Ramaphosa faction. The other faction is led by Ace Mahasula and Jacob Zuma. And they're not factions based on ideology or on policy. They're really factions based on control of resources. You coined the phrase, the battle for the soul of the ANC. It's meant different things in different eras of the organization, hasn't it? When the ANC was a liberation movement, it was almost like um, it was a broad church where the party became a patronage party, even in exile. And, and becoming a patronage party actually made them effective in the struggle against apartheid. The party itself became almost also a parallel administration where it gave jobs to loyal people. And if you're disloyal, you're not going to get a job. Then the party came to power in 1994 and it moved their patronage system onto the state. It grafted it onto the state. Basic services were defined as commodities and the servicing of enterprises that provided them was commercialized. Inadvertently, these opportunities designed for economic transformation became a means for unscrupulous actors to defraud the state through ANC networks. And now what we have is just a bitter fight for control over resources. Lutuli House at the corner of Helen Joseph and Pixley Gasseme an edifice to a glorious movement that is now tearing itself apart and taking the country down with it. Any sense of instability in our party doesn't send a good message for the country. But in the manner some of our comrades conduct themselves, it is shocking and disappointing. And I, I dare say, unless the organization deals with it, we, at some stage we'll have to live with the consequences consequences that will affect every citizen. Analyst and governance specialist Judith February maintains the divide between the ANC camps is irreconcilable. Those who are um, earnest about doing um, good for the country and those who believe in the constitution and then others who have frankly, like former President Jacob Zuma, constitutional vandals and they will do anything in their power to take the edifice down with them um, in their own interests. If the ANC was really serious about corruption and about accountability, he would have been suspended as a member of the ANC. So if they take him on, the fear is that his supporters will then fight back in the ANC. The main face of this fight and poised as a possible contender for the presidency is the Secretary General Ace Mahashule, who's currently facing 21 charges of corruption. How we are handling the SG's matter, unintentionally, it sends a message to the public that we are weak, 
that we are at his mercy, which doesn't speak well about the organization. It doesn't speak well about our decisiveness. It doesn't suggest you are decisive on Mahashule or on the former president, Zuma. I agree. In an effort to clean up, the National Executive Committee of the ANC, the party's highest decision-making body between conferences, is grappling with processes to deal with members who are either criminally charged or accused of wrongdoing. The NEC is awaiting further guidance from top officials on implementing the 2017 NASREG Step Aside Resolution. But already in December last year, the ANC's Integrity Commission recommended the Secretary General himself relinquish his post. Not only has Ace Mahashula refused to step aside, he's supporting the former president who has defied the Constitutional Court. The resolutions of the conference are very clear in directing all of us to comply with the law enforcement agents. I say he has been reckless. To me, he has acted like a wrong element. He has showed the constitution of the organization and his resolution a middle finger in public more than two times. So he is now in the face of with Ramaphosa. If Ais Mahasule wins, I think what he will do, he will then feel that he's strengthened enough to topple uh, Sir Ramaphosa. Can he do it? Can Ace become president? If he wins on this guideline, his strength will be to such an extent that he can do that. So that is why it is so important for Sir Ramaphosa to enforce this guideline and force him to step down. But there are many ANC leaders embroiled in corruption allegations with an apparent reluctance to hold them accountable for fear of bringing the whole house down. And many will argue what has happened to innocent until proven guilty. The resolution says to protect the image of the organization during the period of your case. Don't make the organization to actually find itself spread dealing with it with the prosecution of its program and explaining you whilst the big mission of the organization is about the nation as a whole while some members defy the resolutions others are making an example of them in february eastern cape premier oscar mabuyane fired the mec for health cindy swakomba after she refused to step aside while facing charges for misappropriating funds earmarked for nelson mandela's funeral in 2013. In the meantime, the jury's still out on whether the ANC top six will manage to convince the former president to appear before the commission into state capture. If not, Zuma could face a two-year jail sentence. It appears that he and other senior ANC leaders are above the law. Now, once you have one group of citizens above the law, the others, sort of low-level people with no networks, not in the party, they can get prosecuted. We then have no constitutional democracy anymore. So if the ANC wants to hold people accountable, the very first person they, it needs to hold accountable is Jacob Zuma. This disobedience for the rule of law threatens to derail the inquiry into state capture. Oswald Mashaba, former head of Shwifambo, a process supplier, took his lead from Jacob Zuma and defied a summons to appear before the commission. This conduct by anybody, if it spreads, it will be the beginning of chaos in our legal system. It is a mistake to think this corruption is only about individuals, as some of the information emerging from the State Capture Commission suggests the ANC party itself stood to benefit either directly or indirectly. So the moment one gets to a position which has been the case where you get a state contract and part of that contract, uh, almost a percentage, has to go to the ANC. And it's not only at a national level, but it also happened at a municipal level. A cut goes to the local ANC, to the local party. It is very difficult to eradicate um, that culture. There is a narrative that seeks to blame all of the country's woes on the Zuma years. And yet, the endemic culture of corruption within the ANC didn't begin or end with Zuma. Aren't we here ultimately because the party has placed its unity above the interests of the country? I think there's a deliberate exercise by criminals in the organization to misuse the word unity 
to defend malfeasance, which are very detrimental to the image of this organization, which is so central to the believability of this country, to the investor community, to all South Africans who must actually see their future in this country. Is it inevitable that there will be two ANCs? The organization will split. I wish that doesn't happen, Bungan. But if it is a split between the cadres of the movement who want to run a noble ANC and criminals who are corrupt, so be it. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.